Hey guys, Tomo McGrath here. I wanted to show you one of the warm-up drills we did at this year's summer camp. Um, so normally when I teach uh, the uh single weapon work, uh, long weapon work, stick or sword, I'll start with a, a neutral stance, you know, feet about shoulder width apart, feet parallel to one another, and 45 degrees to the target. This is to give a compromise between, you know, obviously standing flat, your whole body's open, but standing completely sideways, your kidney and spine a bit open. So I like that 45 degree angle as a place to start. I'll have the knees bent and we'll cut on diagonals. And I like to keep the feet flat as a way to see if the if people are capable of using their hips for the motion to drive the uh, sticker sword without lifting the heels up. I want some flexibility in the hips. That's basically what it is. And then you go to sidestepping, simple sidestepping here, right? And the advantage of this is it keeps you one place. You're rotating, you know, letting the hips do the sidestepping to get force into the target. And you can go from a simple sidestep, which rotates in place, to a wide sidestep, which gets you off of uh, his line of attack, right? Um, this is useful when you have a big long sword. This is a, a good thing trainer made of aluminum that's you know long enough for me to use. Um, what I gave them was some footwork I've taken from what I've added to the Learning Through Comparison series uh, that's useful for smaller weapons. So, show you that in a moment. Okay, here's doing the same drill with a short sword trainer. It's basically just an ax handle I cut down the length of the short sword. And you see, you know, a pretty good coverage across my body with something even of this length. Now, working with the, the smaller blades compared to a sword, you know, this 12 inch Kukri is a smaller blade. Um, you still have pretty good coverage, you know, as long as you keep that, your, your weapon hand within the, uh, your visual field. You know, with a longer sword, you can make longer cuts, you know, and you're still keeping that opponent pretty far away from you. When you're, you got, as you go down in length, so instead of, say, a 30 inch, blade you know you're you can move this and and still keep it you know keep the guy pretty far away from you even if that blade I'll show you this way even if that hand gets out of your visual field at some points you know there's still enough of a, of a bubble there to keep him at distance I prefer to keep the hand you know close in my vision as much as possible but you, you might lose power that way with something this long or longer. As you start getting down to a foot and you lose reach, but you do gain more control, right? So I can keep this, that, that hand, obviously you can't see it from your angle, but I can, my hand is still in my visual field as they're coming here and my circles are tighter, right? Oops, sorry. You start getting into something like this. This is a seven and a half inch uh, cold steel recon scout. You notice I took the top quillion off the uh, guard uh, to make it more useful as a survival knife. This is my camping knife. So you want to be able to put your thumb there to trim things. Uh, but technically it's a bowie knife. So if I had to fight with this, I would want to do some footwork. I want to keep this more in my visual field and I want to keep it within the outline of my body. I don't want to go too wide with this because it has openings to the opponent that you can take advantage of. And it's only seven and a half inch blade. If you carry a little three inch pocket knife, that seems like a big knife. If you're in the old days carrying a 32 inch bladed saber, this is not that big. So what I did was combine the basic footwork with some footwork we use in um, the knife jab work and the knife jabs and I'll show you on the heavy bag that's give you a visual reference so 
So you'll notice in our uh, basic knife jabs, welcome to Colin Saksak, that long range jab, there are three distances we compare with this. One is without any footwork, just extending out. The other is with a twist of the hip, you get that much difference in extension. And then if you twist the hip and take the foot off the ground, you get that much difference. So we're going from, let's see here, I'm just touching the bag to the hip change, which is probably the length of this five and a half blade. And then add the rear leg pick up and you're probably gaining a foot of distance. There's inverse relationship, of course, between uh, speed of recovery and, and distance reached. The compromise I would use uh, back in sparring my peers learning this material was I would just do the, the hip shift. I was relatively one of the taller of the guys that did not need to use that full lean. Uh, Tuangahe and of course the shorter guys in this among the students did use it effectively, they needed it. I didn't, I didn't use it that much. But there are times, so I added, I took that and added it into a drill for small little boy knives. So the drill I had for here was you're in your fight here, right? And you want to get extension, so you shift that leg over, there's your cut on one, two, you're going back to a neutral stance, three, you're coming here, back into a back stance or a basic stance. So let me show you how we apply that with the stick. So I gave them a basic starting stance, you know me. I like to have the feet flat, parallel to one another, 45 degrees to the target, uh, flat on the target, obviously the front open, but sideways can leave your spine or kidneys open. So my compromise is 45 degrees to the target roughly, right? So we have, I just gave them one and two as our warm up. With the knees bent, I wanna see hip flexibility. Then went to, look at the extension here. So if I back all the way up, so I'm just touching here. The elbow slightly bent, right? From here, I just do the hip shift. I put it in front so you can see. I'm getting, you know, a good five, six inches of difference. So the drill we did at camp was hip shift for one, return back to the 50-50 weight distribution combat stance for two, and then a back stance for three with the weight on the back leg. So again, you're on guard, either basic guard or a uh, advanced guard. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I, I gave them the one at full extension with the hip change. The two came back, cutting with a more powerful cut. You really shouldn't be trying to get reach for this. You're trying to cut off the path of, of counterattack. And then three was a vertical cut that we gave as a warm up in order to get uh, the weight in the back. So you're preparing, you know, to retreat or that light, the leg is light, you can use that to step in and get another strike. Uh, so, show you from the other side. We had hip shift on one to get extension. Two was back to a 50 50 weight distribution. Three was a back stance with a vertical cut. See so in front. You go on guard. One, two, three. Or from an advanced stance. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that was the warm up we used at camp.